Loki Episode 5 reinforces some of the show's previous themes, but are those themes biblical? Uh, Hey, I'm Bruce on another episode of Spirit Life where I'll have a few spoilers in this quick review of episode five of Loki. We see Loki wake up in what he thinks is the afterlife, but thankfully for him, it's just another chance to do right. Now, biblically speaking, we know that there's only one life. There's only this life, and it is appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. So it's not like you can linger around as a ghost or go to purgatory or get a second chance or get reincarnated or anything like that. We don't know really what the afterlife is supposed to look like for the MCU, but we know this ain't it. It's just another alternate reality, and thankfully pruning does not mean the same thing as being killed. So Loki gets another chance to do right. We see that there's hints leading up to this point where maybe he's willing to serve others, maybe he's willing to fight for the greater good and not just be self-serving. But it doesn't really manifest fully until this episode. And that's because specifically he's in love with Sylvie. He's willing to lay down his life to help her. And that's a, a, that's a positive theme. You know, this show has actually really gotten the idea of love correct in a biblical sense, because love is not just a mushy feeling. It is a willingness to serve others the way Jesus served us. He was worthy of all the worship, but he came as a servant. He came to serve others as more important than his own self. So with Loki doing the same thing, that's a positive element of the show. In fact, we see old Loki do the same thing. What's fun about old Loki is he's already learned to love. Now, old Loki survived the Thanos attack. He went off to a planet where he settled down, he grew old, but he was lonely. And he realized that surviving is not the same thing as living. Now, as soon as he went to go find Thor and his family and loved ones again, that's when the TVA got him. But he had already learned the idea of love and he's willing to sacrifice. It's not really clear 100% if he actually died. I think he did because his helmet fell to the ground very dramatically and the monster, the smoke monster from Lost, seems to have eaten him and been satisfied with his meal or something like that. But who knows, it's Loki. He could have been projecting another illusion. But when our Loki goes after the smoke monster with his flaming dagger, that was an act of sacrifice. That's a positive element. One negative theme that has woven its way throughout the show is this idea of modern Satanism or Gnosticism, where you have an authority figure who turns out to be the villain and they need to be overthrown. And this is in a lot of different media. But if you haven't seen my episode two review, go check that out. I think there's a lot of really cool insights about Gnosticism and Satanism and how that is woven throughout the show. And this really manifests itself when Mobius says that he's going to go back and burn the TVA to the ground. Now, as a viewer, I agree with him. The TVA is a villain. They were just the Wizard of Oz, and they were using the ends justify the means mentality to do great evil. So even if they were protecting one timeline, to avoid a war of timelines so the multiverse wouldn't implode on itself, even if that was a positive thing they were trying to accomplish, they were doing it in a negative way by ending people's lives and existence and cutting off their futures. And so they are evil in the context of the show. But when Mobius says he's going to go back and burn them to the ground, that reminds me of so many atheists. Because I've never met an atheist who was not just a disgruntled Christian. Now, if you're watching and you're an atheist, hey, I'm not trying to get into an argument with you. I'm not picking a fight for its own sake. But I do think it's ironic that I've never met an atheist who wasn't upset and mad and bitter deep down. So I don't think the show is trying to make that point, but it just reminded me of so many people who are bitter at Christianity and the Bible or bitter at the Lord himself because maybe they think God should have done this or he didn't do this other thing that he should have done. And, you know, it's just an accusation against the Lord. And there's people like Abraham Piper, for example, uh, John Piper's son, who, you know, John Piper is a famous Christian evangelist and, and author, and his son, whom you think would follow in the family footsteps and be a strong Christian himself. No, he's an atheist and he's out there criticizing in this very cynical and very jaded type of way on TikTok and things like that. It just reminds me of that. You know, when someone finds out that there's a flaw in Christianity, which maybe that's just in their own head anyway, they go after Christianity like it's their purpose in life to take down this evil empire or something. 
I, I don't understand it quite, uh, you know, because it's not philosophically sound. Logically, it makes no sense, and these atheists are not honest with their own selves and their motivations. They're not honest with what's driving them. It's just pain. It's uh, unfulfilled expectation. That's all it is, and they make it more sophisticated, and they try to make it sound more elaborate, but at the end of the day, they're just hurt, and they take it out on everyone around them. Now, I don't think Mobius is going to necessarily do that. Who knows? Maybe he's got a chance to go warn people of the truth or to help them escape the TVA. I don't know how he's going to go about it, but I'm guessing there's going to be a showdown between him and Judge Rimslayer. Now, we'll find out next episode who's behind all of this, I think. I've already predicted that it's going to be Kang the Conqueror, but who knows? There could be a plot twist. Maybe it's another Loki variant who's been behind everything, and he's actually ruling. Maybe Loki got what he thought he always wanted, which was to rule everything. Not just one timeline, but all of them. And maybe there's a Loki at the end of this who's in control. And we see that when Loki plays out his inner fleshly, worldly desires, his carnal, un sanctified desires, that that's what winds up happening. But when Loki decides to lay down his own preferences and serve others, that we see our Loki able to accomplish great things. And there's going to be this clash. That's my prediction. It could turn out like that. And that would be a great positive theme. That would be a great way to end the show. How do you think the show is going to end? Let me know your predictions in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel, truly. Just hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you can subscribe, I would really love to hear from you. I've been enjoying a lot of the conversations that we've been having in the comments section. This is Bruce on Spirit Life.